Alright, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. I really do hope that. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video, which is a match preview of Chelsea's, Frank Lampard's Chelsea's biggest game so far this season. A classic six-pointer that could decide fourth spot in the Premier League. Chelsea versus Tottenham at Stamford Bridge. Man, oh man, Chelsea are in poor form. They're poor at home. Everything's worrying. What a terrifying game. What the hell's happening? <laughs> yeah, Chelsea at home are very, very disappointing. Frank Lampard's going through a difficult time with Chelsea. Um, so I question him sometimes, but generally I don't put this on him. I put it on the players he's got at his disposal. You know, just the chance that Chelsea are creating but not scoring the goals. It's a peculiar situation. Very strange. So I'm gonna do a preview of this game for you guys today. I'm gonna look at Chelsea's last meeting when they beat Tottenham 2-0 away. And also I'm gonna look at Chelsea's most recent game, Tottenham's most recent game, speculate what's gonna happen in this game and express my kind of fears, I guess. <laughs> Talk about players, ramifications, all that kind of good gear that you get out of a tactical match preview. It's going to be super fun and interesting. Before I get into that, a quick word from my sponsor today, One Football. If you like football therapy, which I'm hoping you do, you, I'm assuming you kind of like stats, numbers, football news, Chelsea related stuff, all that kind of good gear. You can get all of that and more on One Football. It's a platform that consolidates all the good gear like stats, scores, news, media, videos, all that stuff that you want out of football and Chelsea news and everything like that. Basically, it's got everything you need. I use it, so go check out One Football. I stuck a link in the top of the description for you guys. Go there and have fun. All right then, let's get on with it. Now, of course, Chelsea did beat Tottenham last time in the Premier League in the reverse fixture. And we are gonna pull out the formation screen in a moment and talk about all these games. But before we do, Let's talk about it. Chelsea are somehow still in fourth. They've been, they've taken like less points than Newcastle and I think maybe even Watford in the last like 13 games, something like that. It's been really, really dismal. Basically, they should not be fourth. Chelsea are still fourth, <laughs> which is like a blessing. If Chelsea win this game, they will go four points clear of Tottenham and I don't trust Manchester United to just keep winning out against all these I was getting inferior opponents. They do very, they do even look better against the better teams. Listen to this, right? In the three games Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has played against Chelsea, um, I think the three, was it three away games? Three away games he's played against Chelsea, he's won. And the two away games he's played against Manchester City, he's won. So that's five out of five. I did hear that from Duncan Alexander today. That's an amazing stat considering they always lose to inferior teams. But generally, I don't trust United to just keep out good form to the rest of the season to secure a top four spot. I genuinely don't think so. Of course, Tottenham Hotspur are hindered by injury. They've got no Kane or Son, their most two prolific goal scorers. Um, but they've had, they'll have a chip on their shoulder. They want to prove against Chelsea that they want to get revenge, basically. Just before we get into this tactical preview, Chelsea have taken, if they win this game, which is very plausible, I think, they'll, they would have taken 10 points from, was it 10 points, hold on, six, nine, ten, yeah, 10 points from Tottenham and Arsenal in the Premier League this season, their biggest two London rivals, and really, probably should have won that game against Arsenal the 2-2, so it should be 12, which would have been immaculate, considering all the dismal performances in between. So that's good, right? So anyway, let's talk about the game and bring up that formation screen. Right next to me, you can see three lineups slash formations from three different games. One being Chelsea and Tottenham's last meeting in the Premier League where Chelsea won two nil away. And then both Chelsea and uh, Tottenham's last game out respectively. Chelsea against Manchester United who lost at home. Uh, Tottenham against RB Leipzig in the Champions League who lost at home. So let's cast our mind backs to that game in the Premier League where Chelsea won. Okay, so most notably in this game that made a big difference. Obviously, Human Son got sent off for that uh, stamp into uh, Rudiger's stomach. Obviously, the same thing Harry Maguire did to Michy Batshuayi, but didn't get sent off rather strangely. Chelsea had a peculiar front three in this. It was a 3-4-3, but they had Willian on the left and Mason Mount on the right, which kind of was very peculiar, but we need to remember this game was heralded as a masterclass by Frank Lampard. Tottenham never got a sniff. It was a really, really comprehensive 2-0 win, even before the dismissal, and they didn't have an answer for it. Willian was, of course, man of the match. He scored the 
opening goal. He also converted a penalty of Jorginho wasn't on the pitch. There was the two central midfielders of Kovacic and Kante. So it was a comprehensive win and a massive performance from Willian. You cannot trust Willian to always come out with these massive performances though. Obviously Jose Mourinho uh, deployed his 4-3-3 in this game with both Harry Kane and Son who were both out for this game. So you think he'd probably play I think he might even drop Deli Ali after his last performance, so I think maybe he'll just have more up front and Bergwijn like close to him, sort of floating around. But before we speculate more about how this game is going to go, let's just talk about that this game first. Obviously, Chelsea played the three-four-three. Marcus Alonso at left wing back, as at right wing back. It sounds quite defensive on the right hand side. You'd think people like. Reese James would be playing regardless, which is fine. Probably makes sense. You'd also think maybe. Does Marcus Alonso start in the left wing back position if he plays that formation? I'm not so sure, but this works perfectly at the time. You'll notice also Jorginho didn't play, Kante did play. Now Kante is injured at the moment, but Kante's always done his best work in the two-man midfield. People talking about, oh, play Kante in his natural position. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> there it is. Kante's natural position in a two-man midfield. Like I said, it's it like a 4-4-2 at Leicester or a 3-4-3. Uh, playing for Chelsea. He's always played in the middle four in a two-man midfield and there it is And that's probably why he works so well in that formation. Anyway, Chelsea had a comprehensive tactical uh, Display in that game and obviously saw out two goals and the red card helped them right next up Tottenham's 1-0 loss to RB Leipzig This is one of the most comprehensive 1-0 wins I have ever seen. They also play a 3-4 Three. They had three, their first choice, three central defenders out. So Yuli Nagelsmann's hand was forced to use two fullbacks in the back three and play Chelsea Loney, Ethan Ampadu in the middle pivot, uh, well, the sort of central center def central defender role. I've also talked about him in my last video. I suggest you go check it out. He had an immaculate defensive performance, uh, which is really, really impressive. So, so far, we see a correlation here with two three, four threes beating Jose Mourinho's Tottenham. To be honest, Tottenham were lucky that they will not 3-0 free, free down in the first half, the way RB Leipzig cut them open, tore them apart completely. They didn't look like they could get a sniff, and really, it was really, really impressive from Leipzig. Deli Alli was very, very poor in this game. That's why I'm speculating he might come off. Obviously, he looked very angry when he came off. Jose Mourinho even called him out afterwards in his press conference saying he wasn't very good, and they were better when he came off. Even though they're short Tottenham, they still have the likes of Lucas Moura, Lo Celso, who's been very, very good, and Steven Bergwijn, who obviously looks a bit of a revelation at the moment. But still, even though Tottenham came alive later in the match, really, they never looked like winning it, and they pretty, like I said, they're lucky not to be 3-0 down at the break. Right, sticking with a free back formation theme, Chelsea lost to Manchester United playing a free 5-2, Martial and James up front, Bruno Fernandes, wan Saka and Williams in the fullback positions. Now, the most notable things about Chelsea's loss at home last time out was Willy Caballero again in goal. Kepa Riva Balaga remains dropped, which is really interesting. Will he come in for the Spurs game? I'm not so sure, man. It's a huge dramatic talking point. And also, Chelsea had the B-Tech front three of Willian, Pedro and Michy Batshuayi, which <laughs> Michy Batshuayi was very, very disappointing indeed. Chelsea can feel hard to done by in that game for a couple of massive VAR decisions that incorrectly went against them, but they should have finished their dinner, and Michy Batshuayi was a big reason for that not happening. N'Golo Kanze came off injured, and I believe he will still be injured, although we sh probably should expect Tammy Abraham to return to the starting lineup, even though Giroud came on and looked very, very bright when he scored that offside header, but you'd think if Tammy Abraham, probably as the preferred striker, would come back for this game. But anyway, I want to talk about how this game could go or how the lineup should be against Tottenham. So I just want to talk to you guys about that. So let's get rid of this formation screen. The big correlation with those two losses when Chelsea beat Tottenham and recently when Leipzig beat Tottenham was it was a 3-4-3 formation that Tottenham could not deal with. Chelsea are giving up goals recently. Does sort of scream Chelsea should deploy a 3 Four, three in this game, right? Chelsea have a lot of good central defenders at the moment. They do. They've got, you know, Christensen's been looking good. He's flown to Milan to get a face mask fitted so he can play in this game. So Christensen's going to start. Rudiger can start. Zuma can start. They all can play. To be honest, Tomori probably deserves a game in terms of his recent performances when he has played. So any three of the four centre-backs could start against Tottenham Hotspur. So 
thinking about that, I think Chelsea probably should play a 3-4-3. Three, three. I think Reese James should play as the right wing back, a bit more license to stay forward more and put in good crosses. And then who plays left wing back? Marcus Alonso, I know that's his specialist position, but he's not played for a while. Um, as Plaquesa playing on the left would probably offer a little bit more defensive solidity. Um, obviously he has played a lot of left back, he'd be allowed to stay forward a bit more, doesn't have to run up and down as much. So maybe, so three centre backs, Reese James on the right wing back, SP left wing back, or maybe Alonso if he's going to actually be good. And then obviously the two central midfielders has to be Jorginho and Kovacic. Kante is out, even though Kante would be first choice in this formation, like I said previously in the video, it would have to be Jorginho and Kovacic. Oh yeah, and I guess Caballero and goal. God. So who's going to be the front three? Well, to be honest, the 3-4-3 three, three might afford a really good opportunity for Olivier Giroud to play as the striker, especially if we've got super, super wide men putting in crosses. Reese James allowed to stay forward more and just put crosses in. Maybe starting Giroud in this type of formation and this type of game would be the perfect opportunity. But it could be Tammy Abraham gagging to get back on the score sheet, so I'd understand if he starts. So who starts on the flanks? If Pulisic's fit, which I don't think he is, he probably starts. William needs to drop another Tottenham masterclass, I'm pretty sure it'll be William. But would it be Pedro again? Arguably Pedro was the best out of the front three against Manchester United. But really, if Hudson-Odoi is fit, he needs to play on the right. William needs to play on the left. Hudson-Odoi com combines incredibly well with Reese James. To be honest, for me, that's my starting lineup at home against Tottenham Hotspur in the Premier League. But anyway, what do you guys think? I'm really keen to hear your thoughts and opinions on the game. Do you agree with me? 3-4-3 three, three, formation. Give me your score predictions down in the comment section below. I want to see how confident people are. If you have enjoyed the content today, guys, please do like the video. That means a lot. Why not subscribe to the channel if you are indeed new? Remember to follow me on social media, especially Instagram at Football Yannick. That's it from me, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, you lot enjoy the football, swing by the channel every day, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.